Good morning, good day, good evening. Welcome back to episode, I guess not welcome back, welcome back to Tech of a T. This is episode 109, and I had a topic I wanted to talk about. Turns out, um, <laughs> everything changed as of, I think, two hours ago. So today is the day, at least when I'm recording this, when I uploaded my video about the fall of Lapsus. I felt like the video was fairly well researched. Everything at the time was up to date. We knew it was going on. Two hours ago happened. Um, so if you don't know, actually, we're going to go over TLDR of what happened there. So if you don't know, basically seven members of Lapsus got arrested. So those seven members, one of those being the the owner or the owner, the uh, the original leader of Lapsus, a 16 year old teen from Oxford. I'm not going to give out any particular details. I know that some out, you know, actually, before I give out any details, I'm going to see if any any mainstream news outlets have said his name. Um, Lapsus teen arrested. For, I don't want to. His doc's already out there. We don't want to say a name that people aren't already reporting on. Uh, nobody is using his name. Okay, we're going to use his alias then. So he goes by a couple of aliases online, White being one of them. That was probably his biggest alias, but he's also gone by Breachbase and also Alexander. Alexander is not his real name, but it's much closer than White and Breachbase. White also sounds a bit like White Rose, which, judging by how old he is... Um, might be part of the inspiration for why he started hacking. So he got arrested. Six other people got arrested. They were also between the ages of 16 and 21. So it was a fairly young group. Now, judging by what they've been saying in the Telegram, it sounds like they have closer to 30 members. So the group is still functioning. And I guess, I guess whoever was in second, like second in charge or third in charge has probably just taken over the group and is directing them in whatever direction they want to go. So I expect there to be more arrests coming soon, assuming that, you know, the other members are just as terrible at hiding their tracks as, um, white bit, as white, as what, what was I trying to say? As white being? As white was being. Yeah, maybe something like that. So... When he started his hacking career, he was actually 11 years old. He started on Minecraft servers, because what else is an 11-year-old going to be playing? Rob Roblox? I guess that makes sense. Maybe Fortnite? She was Fort Wait, five years ago. When did Fortnite come out? Was, For was Fortnite, I think, five years ago? I have no idea. Um, Just. Okay. But m he, was he started hacking on Minecraft servers. I don't know, probably giving himself infinite diamonds or whatever you do on a Minecraft server. So, because he started so young, and because he's still fairly young, he wasn't great at covering his tracks. And, um, yeah, the, the, the feds knew. The feds knew who he was basically since last year. They've been watching his actions, trying to see what he's going to do, trying to work out if this is the guy, you know, doing, doing normal fed stuff, working out if this is the guy that should be arrested. Um, turns out it was because... He also got doxxed. This, <laughs> this was the uh, the other problem. So, being a child, he was fairly good at making enemies with some of the older hackers who, you know, might not like the way he approaches stuff. So, he bought a website called uh, Doxbin. Doxbin, it still operates today. Uh, this website is basically, it's it's like Pastebin. It, it's Pastebin, but for doxers. So he bought the site for 75,000 US dollars. Uh, you might be wondering how a 15-year-old at the time got $75,000. Through his earlier hacking career, he'd made 300 Bitcoin from either siphoning accounts or ransomware and things like that. Basically, he was a fairly successful hacker and sort of got, I guess he got a bit too much of a big head. Uh, during that time, he started the Lapsus group with some like-minded hackers, and now we have what we have today. So, during that time when he bought Doxbin, he, um, is a child. So, he didn't know how the fuck to run the service, and basically drove it into the ground. It went from being one of the, like, big places that people share doxes to... 
basically being a site that nobody gives a shit about. And the original owner, a guy called KT or Kate, depending on how you want to read it, wasn't um, super happy about this and was also willing to buy the site back for, I want to say it was 20,000. There are slightly different numbers floating around, but 20,000 is the most, the, the most credible number. It's anywhere from like 15 to 25, but 20 makes the most sense. So he bought the site back for $20,000 uh, 20, and got the site back to, you know, sort of where it used to be. It's now uh, as respected as you can be in a site that you post doxes with, but respected in that degenerate community. So during that time when the sale was happening... White realized that it wasn't exactly a good idea to do. So he sort of tried to sabotage the site in any way possible. He got the Twitter account... or Before getting the Twitter account banned, he got the... Uh, he tried to steal the Discord they were using. He, they tried... He tried to uh, get the the like domain registrar account uh, banned. He successfully got it locked temporarily. And he called for the original owner's doxing on the dox bin Twitter. So after he took, uh, 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 b sorry, before Kate took back over of the account, he uh, tried to use it to get Kate doxed. Uh, ultimately, he couldn't really do much after that point, so he just got the account forcibly banned. I don't have pictures of those tweets, but from the sources I have heard. Basically, he said some terrorist stuff. It's not very difficult to get banned on Twitter if your intention is to get banned. Just start saying stuff about, you know, racial minorities and stuff. You're going to get banned fairly quickly. So, he got that banned. And Kate, you know, considering that the guy that just sold his service back to him tried to get him doxxed, had a bit of a, um, a grudge against him as as you could reasonably assume. So he then tried to get white doxxed. It took a little while, but ultimately it did happen because he wasn't super great at covering his tracks. And then all of the information was posted on Doxbin. This happened around the same, a little bit earlier than the arrest. So obviously the feds can't exactly just take the dox at face value. They have to go and look at their information to see if it lines up and, Judging by the fact that he got arrested, it lined up. So, he got arrested, six others got arrested, and, um, yeah, that's supposed to be the end of that. I thought the group was going to fall apart, and, you know, we wouldn't be talking about lapses anymore. That's not the case, though. So, prior to the arrest, <laughs> just prior to the arrest, I'll see if I can find the exact message. I might have scrolled past it. I probably scrolled past it. They said that they were going to go on vacation. Here it is. So, yeah. Right here. If you can see it, maybe, possibly. Eh, focus on it. Focus on it. You're not going to focus on it. Oh, wait. Are you doing it now? No. Fuck, this is awful. Oh, just, just focus for a moment. A few of our members has a vacation until 30th of March. So, yeah, they said they were going on vacation. That was just before the arrest. Now it is the 30th of March, and they are back posting. They posted a, a leak from a company called Globant. Globant, um, I still have no idea how to say it. I, had, I have no idea what they do. Uh, they are a, apparently a software development company. Uh, what products do they have? Let's go to the Globant website. Um, I actually don't know what was in the leak. I believe it was source code of some description. Um, oh, they also posted a leak from uh, Facebook, C-SPAN, and DHL. You know, all, all fun stuff. Oh, also Citibank. Basically, they just dumped a bunch of shit. And the Apple Health uh, health and fitness tracker, which I don't really think is that big of a deal, but these guys do things. Uh, this is a terrible website. Oh, there we go. Now I can scroll. Reinvention is in our DNA. Uh, we drive transformation with our studios model 
Globant X and our global autonomous co- What do you even- Those are not- That's not a sentence. Just tell me what you do. Uh, reinventing careers. Okay, you- You make jobs. Sure. We open portals. I don't know what this company does. They just say a lot of, um, a lot of corporate buzzwords. About. Give me your about. What do you- do? Okay, that doesn't work. <laughs> We are a tech. We are a tech innovation company, but our website does not function. Okay, so we are Globant. Globant, uh, whatever. We use the latest technologies in the digital cognitive fields to transform your organization in every respect. That's still not saying anything. Um, four friends in a bar. That's how we started. Okay, so they don't actually say what they do. I don't know what this company does. If anyone knows, let me know. But yeah, they, they were part of the league, and I don't know what was in the Facebook league. No one is actually talking about that. And considering this literally just happened, I, I don't think that anybody else is going to be reporting on this either. Um, if I look up Lapsus Globant, is anybody talking about it yet? No, literally nobody has even mentioned this has happened. Everyone's still talking about the previous leak, the um, the Microsoft and the Okta leak. So, yeah. I expect it to make its way into the news cycle in, you know, probably 6 to 12 hours, though. Usually, usually with this stuff, one of the outlets will report on it, and then everybody just copies their report. And um, it is going to look kind of funny, though, Literally two days after all the reports saying they were arrested, uh, the group is just still going. E especially when they said one of the members arrested was the leader of the group. So it's going to look a little bit stupid. And I will... I've already posted the story about it, but I'm without a doubt going to do some sort of follow-up content about it if anything, you know, kind of exciting keeps happening down the line. Lapsus has been... Such an interesting situation to follow, just because of all of the mistakes they made along the way, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I want to see where they go. At some point, they're going to get caught, but for now, at least, I'm going to ride the train and, um, I guess see where it leads us. So yeah, lapsus, lapsus is still around apparently, but um, that's that's pretty much it for that one. I probably should talk about the slight change in look the, po the the podcast and all of my videos have. So I'm no longer using my old lens. I'm going to grab it. Here we go. It... I should come up with a better mic solution. Maybe I have, need to have like a lavalier mic or something when I move over here. I don't know. Anyway, um, here is the old lens. <clears throat> Oh, and now it's focusing on the microphone. There we go. Here is the old lens. This is... This is the uh, the kit lens that came with the camera. It's not a bad lens by... by oh, that looks nice. Focus. There we go. Not a bad lens by any means. Like, it, it does the job. It is a... What is it? 15 to 45 mil zoom. So, it... You know, it gets a... Decent enough zoom. There's way too overkill for my my setup. Uh, the zoom does end up um, causing the f stops to drop, which makes it a little bit more annoying to use. So the zoom really can't be functionally used without um, having your ISO be in automatic mode, which, due to my Jankast lighting setup, doesn't exactly function uh, properly either. So. Uh, can we unlock it and... Z uh, uh, there we go. There we go. Okay, there we go. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Now we can... There we go. You can, like, change the name like that. Um, It's a good enough lens. Like, it, it served me... It served me well enough for the time that I, I had been using it. But... At a time, I, I kept talking about wanting to buy a new lens, so I finally got around to doing it. I have that Sigma lens that I mentioned buying, and I have the, um, the, the, the fucking, the, the, the filter on it as well, so I can do this. Woo! And now it's really dark. But I haven't actually changed any of the settings on the, wow, my face looks really weirdly shiny in this light. 
Um, I haven't actually changed any of the settings on the camera itself. I'm basically just changing the setting of the sunglasses on the camera. But I've conjugated it in a way that I don't actually need to really turn up the, um, the, the, I guess, darkness of the camera, the, the darkness of the, the filter. I can, um, maybe a touch works fit, uh, relatively well and, uh, it sort of dims those lights back there enough without destroying my face, but, you know, if I go too far, then I need to start doing crazy things like taking, uh, this light here, which is running at 40% right now, and putting it like, you know, maybe not that much, <laughs> maybe not that much, uh, maybe close to like 60% brightness as opposed to the the 40 uh, the 40 percent i would normally run up but that still looks really weird and not like naturally lit up like my my hands i guess my hands look kind of fine here but my face looks really really strange and the lights back there just they are so much darker than they actually are in real life it just looks really really strange um Plus, with the light being that bright, it sort of disrupts those lights back there as well. Also, I don't want to be blind, so I don't like my lights being that bright. So, put it back there. I think I've got my ISO... Actually, what do I have my ISO drop down to now? I want to say it's at, like, 120 or something. Yeah, it's at 125. So, ISO at 125, uh, I'm at f1.4 as well. So, f3.5 is where my old lens was at. And with my settings there, this is how that would look. So, clearly... Uh, actually, we'll put it at, to be fair, 200 ISO. So, 200 ISO, f3.5. This is how my old lens would have looked with the, uh, with the filter on it. So, we can go, like, really dark. And now it looks ridiculous. Um, but that, that might make sense in certain recording contexts. Like, if I was recording in direct sunlight, for example, then, you know, you, you want to make sure you're limiting a lot of the light that is, uh, being let in. Otherwise, the shot will be just ridiculously overblown. But the nice thing about this lens, it's probably... It's... Here's the thing. This is one of the things I, I was really excited for, but you can't actually notice it super well the camera is now really low um you can't really notice it really low uh, notice it really well just because of the the lack of uh, the lack of things in my backdrop um that's the fact that with the f1.4 it basically adds a a stronger bokeh effect that is the um the blur on things you can see it on the um, the, the microphone arm here. Obviously, in the real world, this isn't, you know, blurry. But everything in the background is, has, like, a blur to it now. Um, if I get the... I might be able to show you, actually. This is going to be terrible content for the, the audio, audio viewers. Yeah, audio listeners, those ones. But if we focus on the chair... Okay, so chair or microphone, that works as well. So... Now, if I get back here, as you can see, I was really, really blurry. That effect can be um, can be strengthened by either moving the camera closer to me or by just getting closer to the camera. As we get closer, basically, yeah, there we go. So everything in the background gets it is like less and less in focus. Obviously, that's not a functional way to record a video like that, but I could always uh, either move the camera closer to me, or that's one reason why you might want to get something that is like a f1.4 and then a 30mm lens. The problem with getting a 30mm lens, though, is <clears throat> the, the shot's a little bit too close. Um, maybe at some point down the line, I would do something like that if I wanted to have, like... If I was recording in, like, a much bigger space, it, it could reasonably makes sense but at a desk base like this i think i think a 16 mil offers your offers sort of a a sensible amount of um wideness because i have recorded with the um the camera really close to me like my older videos i think 
I was recording the distance like this when I was using the webcam. So it it, it looked very, very up close and personal, which might be the style you're going for, but it's not the style that I'm going for. I like, I think for especially content like this, the wider aspect ratio is, it's a lot more, un, natural is not the best word for it. It's a lot more inviting, I would say. If I was doing maybe, if I was doing lectures, if I was doing specifically just tutorial content, I think there is a benefit in having a very up close and personal shot. Especially if I was doing stuff where I was only showing my head. I think in, in cases like that, it um it, it might make a lot of sense. But for uh, this style, for my regular videos, I don't think so. Um, also, it's it, a setup like this is going to be perfectly fine for when I'm doing my standing content, pacing back and forth, which is the plan at the new place. I've said it before, I'm not going to get into it again, otherwise Ransom will add another note to my, uh, to my timestamp saying, talking about the new house again. Uh, I'm, I'm going to clear those out if you put those in there. <laughs> but, uh, unless I'm specifically talking about it, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> I like the new lens. It took me quite a bit to get it configured to a point that was actually, you know, good. Out of the box with my, like, without touching anything, any sort of audio setup or camera setup, it might look better than what you had before, but it's always going to be, you know, a fraction of what it can be if you spend time sitting down and configuring it. And I'm sure that if I spent time working on this setup as well, I could get this looking much, much better. Oh, one thing that really did help um, you probably can't tell from this spot, but those lights back there are probably, I would say at least 20 or 30 centimeters further away from the wall. So if I put them back where they used to be, it looks ridiculous. And it was one of the things that it kind of made me feel bad about buying the lens when I first, uh, when I first plugged it in, but I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. I'll bring the mic with you, uh, with me as well. Here we go. Actually, I can't because it doesn't go that far. So I'm going to bring it as close as I can and then just yell. Okay, there we go. See, so look at that. So you have this just really white, bright spot. In, in real life, it doesn't look like that. But when you're dealing with cameras, especially when you have, like, inconsistent lighting, when I have a really bright backdrop and lights on me as well, that's kind of a... It's a weird setup to get a natural look. There's... No way that I can really think of to get this looking basically like it looks in real life. Like, this is just a, a situation that makes no sense for a camera. So, there are little things that I can mess around with to try and make it... Um, try and make it easier to work with. All of this is sort of... Uh, depend. Well, all of this is sort of based on the current setup I'm in. When I move to the new place, it's all going to change. I'll have to change everything all over again. I'll probably just sit there for like a good, a good couple of hours just getting everything functional, but that's the problem for then. Um, <clears throat> for now, though, I'm happy with what it is. I'm not buying more camera gear for a while. <laughs> Hopefully. I don't have... Okay. I don't have anything on the, on the chopping block to buy. If I did buy anything... It would be a lavalier mic specifically for the purpose of the new place when I have a, a standing desk. But that's going to wait until I have the standing desk. Apart from that, I um, think we're good for now. I don't... Uh, I Look, at any point I could buy a new camera. I, I'm not going to do that, though. There's just no reason to do so. This camera does everything that I need it to do. I was thinking about this probably like last night or so. When I buy a new camera, it's probably going to be, like, two or three years from now when this camera starts kind of, like, playing up and not being in not being in as good of a condition as I would really like it to be. But until that point happens, there's just really no reason to do so. Even though I might... If I remember, I, I never remember these things. I, I, I'm just going to demonstrate it with stuff I have right now. So this cam uh, this camera, this is not a camera, this is a lens. This lens is 
very tiny compared to um, my my current lens. So this is a can of deodorant. Um, is that about accurate? A little bit longer. Okay, uh, basically up until this, uh, up until a bit, of, uh, a bit past the like little lid part, that is how long the lens is. And it's about as wide as this drink bottle. So, actually, why don't I just use the drink bottle? Yeah, so about, it's kind of like this. Yeah, that's how, maybe a bit, a bit longer. That's sort of like the difference between these new lenses. And the camera's not any bigger, so <laughs> it looks comically large. And surprisingly, my current setup actually holds it fine. I'm not worried about the, um, the, the, the stand. The stand itself is... I've shown it before, it's two steel bars that are clamped together. That's not going to move. Uh, I was more worried about the little ball joint that's being used on the um, the camera mount to have it angled in the spot I want it to be angled. Uh, it turns out, buying shit from eBay, as I've said before, tends to work fairly well. This is one of the small rig mounts, not the old um, plastic ones you used to buy. One of... Uh, one of I know my. I actually don't have the backlight set up today. One of um these ball mounts, ball mount, ball. Can I get off? Can you let me? Oi, oi, oi. Let me let me do this. There we go. Eh, are we gonna take the top of it with it? Probably. You guys probably can't hear me. Any? <laughs> Maybe you should have the mic pointed at me when I'm doing that. Then you guys can actually hear what I'm I'm saying. Eh, eh, there we go. Ball mount. Ball mount. It's a mount. There's a ball, and it moves in angles, and you can, like, clamp it at any point you want it to be clamped at, and they're very convenient. And the small rig mounts are very cheap, and I like both those things, especially when they're combined together. Makes for a very, um, very useful experience. It, I think, I think the only thing I would want to... There, there's nothing right now that's, like, you know... I'm, I super want to buy. There, there's always, like, here's the thing. If you want to constantly be buying stuff to upgrade your lighting, your camera, your audio, everything you're doing, there is always more money you can spend. You can always, you know, become Linus Tech Tips, buy a bunch of red cameras for $10,000, and then buy the, like, $500 batteries that each of them use, but when it comes to reasonable spending and things that might improve the quality of the content or the quality of the visuals, obviously no amount of gear is going to improve the content itself, but improve the quality of the visuals and the audio. When it comes to a reasonable spending, I think... I think I'm already above that point. <laughs> like, you don't need a Shaw and you don't need this lens, but... There's just nothing right now where I'm like, yeah, that will make this much better if I do that. So I'm not going to. Maybe until Black Friday. It, look, if if something's cheap on Black Friday, I I'm always uh, I'm always watching prices. I'm not one of those people who just buy something on Black Friday because hey, look, it's fifty percent discounted. But it turns out that actually uh rose the price by fifty percent the previous week. I'm not going to do that, but. When it comes to things that um, I, I was already looking at, if they're on special, then maybe it'll happen. I think if I was to buy anything, it would be lights. Um, obviously, I have lights, but I could always go with... Like, these lights are the most entry-level lights on the entire planet. Um, well, you could probably go with... If you want to go en most entry-level lights on the entire planet, go buy yourself a lamp. I've used lamps before. They're not good lights. You can get them working relatively well, but, like, <laughs> lamps, like, just a, a desk lamp is not exactly the best lighting setup. But I'd want to get something that is a bit softer than these. These are a bit harsh, and, you know, because I sweat a lot because I live in Australia, it can look a little bit ridiculous and, you know, like I've just fucking climbed out of a pool. So... Maybe that part would be worth addressing, but at least for now, it's fine. It's fine. It's better than it was before. Can I actually show you 
Actually, no, I'm going to try to show you a screenshot of what the old footage looked like. Because this is one of those things where it's sort of hard to tell how much it's improved. Unless you see sort of a side-by-side. -side. So here is a... Grab that one. Um, is that it? Yes, here it is. I'm going to put it in my browser. I should really set up things that are not my browser to view things. So, as you can see, I look a lot more healthy now. Not healthy as in skinnier. That no, no amount of camera is going to do that. But I mean healthier as in not deathly pale. And this is how I actually look. I am a little bit tanned. I am not... I have never seen sun in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> even though some, sometimes it does feel like that is the case. And like... My arms actually are roughly this tan. Maybe maybe the camera is over-exaggerating it. Ah, uh, no, I think that's about right. It's about as... Without having color-accurate monitors, it's sort of hard to tell how close that actually is and how close it looks just because of the way my monitor is, um, monitor is colored. But my shirt looks basically like it should as well like everything besides the lights back there everything looks a lot more a lot more natural also i should have moved my lights back months ago that this this new setup looks so much better with them um and then you can kind of tell that the depth of field the bokeh whatever you want to call it is much stronger uh on my new lens compared to the old one it's not you know super strong but you can certainly tell if you are looking for it i think the main thing though is the fact that i don't look deathly ill anymore and i feel like that is a bit of an improvement <laughs> if, if nothing isn't worth how much i spent it's not the most expensive lens out there but i guess it depends on what you're trying to do anyway let's talk about the gpu market and how the gpu market is uh apparently gonna get better i don't believe it i'll i'll believe it when i see it like we can buy gpus um if we go to my local retailer right now this is pc case gear i always recommend them great uh, great business if, if you're in australia just use PC, uh, pc case gear and there's a couple others that are really good like scorp tech but whatever that's not the point the point is GPUs. So GPUs have been like in stock for quite a while now. So can we f even find anything on the A? Wait, what? Didn't I? Wasn't I just on the AMD side? Wait, what? Hold up! I someone re-roll the tapes there. Was I on the AMD side there, or was I on, or was I on the Nvidia side? Why did they go to the Nvidia cards? I know I clicked AMD. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Um. On the AMD side, so we have one 6500 XT that is out of stock. We have one 6800 out of stock. Okay, let's go to the NVIDIA side. Uh, NVIDIA. And what do we have out of stock over here? Uh, we'll go price low to high. I'm very happy the GT730 is not out of stock. Um, okay, these are not real cards. Anything... If any of these cards are out of stock, I literally don't care. Nobody in their right mind should ever be buying a fucking GT730 or a GT1030. These are not real GPUs. The GPU in your CPU is better than these. So, real cards. Uh, let's have a look. Anything? Uh, 1650 is out of stock, or at least one of them. And... Oh, oh, we're seeing a couple. Uh, 3060 Ti out of stock. This 3060i, this 3060i, this one as well. But that still leaves... Oh, this one and... Okay. That still leaves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... That still leaves seven SKUs in stock. Um, here we go. Uh, 3070, so one, two... And the rest of them are all in stock. All of the 3070 Ti's look to be in stock. And then 3080. Uh, that one's out of stock. Out of stock. Okay, those ones are still... Even there, not even... 
yeah, like a, a couple of them are out of stock, but a good amount of them are still in stock. Um, 3080 Ti. Uh, fucking hell, that's so much money. Wait, is there still one that's more expensive than my car? Okay, we have to go to the 3090 Ti to get into range of more expensive than my car, but uh, those ones don't count because they're not in. Uh, they're they're not uh, out yet. Um, they're out in April, one day before my birthday. I'm not buying them, and I hope that nobody in my family buys me one because that's too much money. Um, no one in my family has that much money to spend on fucking cheap EU. Uh, anyway, 3090s. That one's out of stock. Only one of them's out of stock, and the rest of them are all in stock. So clearly, at least in the Australian market, and it seems to be the case in the American market as well, GPUs are, for the most part, in stock. Like, a couple of SKUs, if you're very particular about which card you want to buy, maybe you're going to have trouble. Maybe you're going to have trouble buying, like, a specific Wind Force card. Or, is Wind Force still a thing? I don't know. That was a thing when I was growing up. Um, but maybe you want to buy this tough gaming card. Maybe specific cards are out of stock. But um, Asus says it's reducing its MSRP aggressively for graphics cards across all SKUs. I'm very interested to see if this is actually going to lead to lower pricing. Um, but unlike when, say, AMD or NVIDIA sets uh, MSRPs, this MSRP actually, you know, maps somewhat to reality. AMD and NVIDIA don't make cards. NVIDIA does, like, sell cards that are NVIDIA branded, but... They don't actually make them. They always, you know, send them out to a, a third party. So when they set an MSRP, it doesn't really mean anything. It, they can only say like, oh, this is what we think the price is going to be. But then you're going to have cards that have all of these extra things attached to them that are not going to be anywhere near that price. And if they're sold at that price, they'll be sold at close to a loss. So I do have some hope when Asus is saying this. I will believe it when I see it, though. I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm... I'm... I want it to happen. So $5, then. No, that's... No, shut up. Uh, we're aggressively slashing prices on GPUs. On basically last-gen tech at this point. Right, but, like, a lot of people are still running 1660s. <laughs> like, the, the 1660, as we looked at last week, is still the most popular GPU on Steam. Anything that is cut right now is going to be better than a 1660. Um, scalpers might actually get an ex actually just wait might actually just an excuse. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm still thinking they'll be way higher. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's very likely they're still going to be higher than original pricing, and I don't think we're ever getting down to the original pricing we had. Like that, the days of that are completely gone. But if we can start seeing, you know, mid-range cards, like a, what, a 60, a 36, not 1660, a 3060 that is $400 in Australia or $500, not 700 I think that is a lot more reasonable, a lot more tolerable. People could actually build a good gaming system for, you know, under maybe a thousand dollars in Australia is rough, but under like fifteen hundred or, or two thousand. <clears throat> right now, if you wanted to do that, you'd basically have to rely on either the second hand market, which depending on how the card was used might be a little bit iffy, or you have to go and rely on integrated graphics, which if you're on the AMD side, might not be the worst, to be completely honest. Especially if you're going to fucking go with one of these instead. Don't buy these. Please just don't buy these. I, I, I think... Has LG did a video on why you shouldn't buy these? I want to say they did. Um, if they... I'll, I'll check in a second. But just don't buy these. Anyway. Um, due to the price hikes that happened during COVID. And likely price hikes that are going to happen during the, uh, the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. Uh, because, you know, natural resources and things. I have no idea what that's, what's going on with the situation. Is it still going? Uh, I, I've heard something about, like, talks are happening and maybe things are, like, slowly dying down. But I don't know if it's escalating or anything. Anyway, not the point. Um, 
supply chain disruptions always make things go up. And COVID is still going as much as I want it to be over. So those increases in prices are still there and still not going to be what we absolutely want it to be. But I will accept prices that are like, not ridiculous. I shouldn't be paying seven hundred dollars for a mid tier card. Like that's just ri that's just absolutely insane. Like seven hundred dollars, you should be buying like a, a what a thirty seventy or a whatever the equivalent of the AMD side is. Like that's how much seven hundred dollars should be getting you, not what it is today. Like it's just it's just stupid. It's genuinely just stupid. Um, and they're doing so because the new gen is taking the old MSRP spots. I am actually really curious how the new cards will be priced. Uh, what does this guy say? My take is that NVIDIA is going to have a 25 to 30% bump in the MSRP to what the extremely expensive 2000 series was. If you recall, the 3000 series would have redemption arc uh, for them in terms of pricing and performance. Of course, then the pandemic and second crypto boom happened and uh, squashed them out. I think that's a, a fair assessment. I think we need to accept that the MSRPs that we were getting before, where we had, you know, $300 60 class cards, is just, that's just not happening anymore. Maybe, maybe in like two or three years, possibly, but it's not happening anytime soon. And if you want to buy a GPU, basically, yeah, you're going to be stuck. Also hope every new graphics card will have a mining blocker or limiter. It's not going to... That's not going to stop GPU mining. All it's going to do is make people buy more of them because then they need to buy more to have the same amount of uh, hash rate. This is not going to happen. Also, like, these guys that are running these, like, million dollar crypto miners... They're buying these custom firmware. Like, they're getting around most of the setup anyway. It's not like you can just say, oh, there is, like, a limiter on it and there's nothing you can do about it. There's all... Like, if you've added either hardware or software, there are always going to be certain mitigation strategies that can be uh, employed to sort of disrupt that... Disrupt that disruptor, you might say. So it's not just a perfect solution and... I, I imagine NVIDIA probably still will have it. Um, AMD, AMD couldn't have it because AMD has its open source drivers on Linux. So if they did it through software, people could just rewrite the fucking software. <laughs> like, unless they did it on firmware, which, you know, would still, people would still modify it because they can just flash new firmware. <laughs> like, they always just write custom firmware and just, sure, maybe it doesn't support a lot of the other things it supports, but... Yeah, it, it's just, it's just going to do what it does. Yeah. <laughs> but I will be really happy to see when GPUs at a reasonable price. Um, I'm still sticking by what I said, though. When the 4000 series comes out, depending on pricing and depending on performance improvements, I'll probably end up buying it. I, I don't really know. Do we have any... Do they 4000 series? No, 4,000 NVIDIA. 7,000 is what I meant. Do we know anything about the upcoming 7,000 series? From my understanding, it's supposed to be released, like, at the end of this year. Uh, AMD 7,000 series GPU leaks. Uh, a month ago, 7,000 leaks confirmed. Okay, well, yeah, the, the GPUs will exist. We know the GPUs will exist. It's not a, it's not a rumor to say, hey, look. AMD is going to make new cards. It's sort of like, uh, <laughs> I remember during the, wasn't the last, yeah, wasn't the, the last live letter done for Final Fantasy XIV, I think it was the previous one, where I think, I think Yoshi P mentioned offhand the next expansion happening for fourteen. And the chat just went wild, being like, oh my god, next expansion confirmed. So, Keep in mind, this happened, like, four months after Endwalker came out. So, you know, people were still playing Endwalker. But, yeah, next expansion confirmed. Like, yes. Yes. 14 is one of the biggest MMOs in the world right now. 
no shit, there's another expansion happening. Like, what, 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 are, you, what are you talking about? The internet will get very excited about things that genuinely don't matter and latch onto things that everybody already knows. <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you guys doing? But as for these GPUs, as I said, I will believe the pricing when I see it, and I really hope that the 7000 series doesn't, doesn't have horrible pricing. It probably will. But, you know, as I've said, my current card is already a fairly large gap with the 6000 series. So if the 7000 series isn't a step backwards, which would be really weird, uh, there's no reason not to buy it. I want my 165 FPS in 14. I want my, like, 7000 FPS in Hollow Knight. <laughs> like, I just, I just want a new GPU. It'll be nice. I don't know if I'll get rid of this GPU or if I'll just um, I might I might keep this GPU around and then build a streaming PC. Like I'm not I'm not too sure. I've been thinking about it. Um, but I don't know because I already have the GPU. Like that's the thing. I have the GPU here, so it's not like I have to go and buy another one to do GPU encoding and all of that mess. It's just. Do I want to reuse this, or do I want to just sell it? I don't know. I will have space at the new place for the um, for, for a streaming PC. And I know that streaming PCs can make things a lot more convenient. But, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to work out how much the rest of the system would cost me. It'd probably be... It'd probably be, like, maybe eight, 800 or so at most... Because the GPU would be the most expensive thing, then sticking like a $300 C... Maybe I could even less, though. Like a $200 AMD CPU, something like that. Maybe that will... Eh, maybe that'll work. And uh, maybe it might be close to like 500 or so. five or 600 Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, the GPU doesn't come out till December anyway, so... <clears throat> yeah, I, I'd be settled in the new place for a while, and then I can work out if I have the space, and if I want to do it, and... If I want to turn my room into more of a a heated nightmare, at least that'll be slightly slightly better. At least the room's slightly bigger, so it shouldn't get as hot as quickly. But hey, yeah. Um, since we're on the topic of PC hardware, when you are a CPU manufacturer, a GPU manufacturer, marketing is really easy. So. This happens, like, basically every other generation. Intel has just unveiled the world's fastest desktop processor. No shit, because it's their new desktop processor that is at the top of the skew. This happens every generation. That's the point of having a new generation. I don't know why this is talked about so often, but it is kind of ridiculous. Uh, 5.5 gigahertz, uh, i9. How many cores is it? 16 cores. <laughs> uh, 16 cores split between performance and efficiency threads. Uh, and 24 threads on the performance cores. 150 watt base power, which surprisingly isn't that crazy. A 30 megabyte L3 cache. And, uh, up to... 5.5 gigahertz max turbo frequency. Obviously, gigahertz doesn't represent real-world performance, but... Yeah. Um, that is uh, that is a lot of gigahertz. Uh, one of its main rivals will be AMD's recently announced Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Wait, is it actually called... No shot, they actually put 3D on the end. Why is... Why is 3D on the end? Does it have does it have a GPU in it? Is it because of 3D acceleration? Th oh, it actually is a real thing. What? Why the fuck is it called the 3D? What? Oh wait wait wait. Does it have like? Th no wait no. That's a GPU thing. I was gonna say 3D um 3D RAM, but no, that's GPU and no CPU doesn't have RAM on them. What are you talking about? Well, they have the the cache, which is technically RAM. Um. I don't know why it's called 3D. I'm sure someone knows they go and like do the research, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, it's going to have uh, PCI Gen 5 support, which makes sense. 
DDR5 4800 and DDR4 3200 integrated UHD 770 graphics. Wait, let's see what a top of the line i9 is going to give you in terms of GPU performance. Is that a new GPU? No, that is the same GPU being used in the... Oh my god, what the fuck? This is why Intel's integrated GPUs are fucking horrendous. So, this is your i9. Oh, here we go. This is your i5. This is your i9. They have the same GPU. <laughs> they have the same GPU in them. Like, how is that a thing? How do you sell... What is the price of this? What is the price of this one? Uh, how do you sell a $600 CPU with the same built-in GPU as your $200 one? Surely the extra $300 there could go into somewhat of a, uh, you know, a GPU improvement. Or how about you just... Do they actually sell versions of... Does Intel sell versions of their CPU, without, with the exception of the Xeon line, that don't have integrated GPUs? I actually don't know. Intel CPU, no GPU. Do they? Uh, the Some of the... Okay, they do. The... Okay, yeah, the... Uh, an i3? What? Uh, Intel box desktop CPU with no processor graphics. Here we go. So they actually do sell these. I didn't realize because it's not their main lines. Um, 10900X. So is it the X and the E series? Wasn't we... I guess KF doesn't. But K does? And F doesn't. These fucking names. Imagine being a CPU company and like, how do I name stuff? Just stick letters on there, I guess. Oh wait, no. Some of the K's don't. The low-end i7 K's... Wait, no, those are older CPUs. Um, The K's back in the... The... F uh, the Intel 5th Gen. What was 5th Gen? Haswell was 4th gen. I only remember... <laughs> Here's how bad I am with CPUs, right? Here's how little I care about CPU naming. So I don't remember anything after, like, when I started on PCs. So I first built my PC not long after... Not long after Haswell came out. So all I know is Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge, and Haswell. I know there's... Isn't there, like, an ice lake in there somewhere? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I should probably know, but, like, I, I'm too lazy. I'm genuinely too lazy. Plus, for the for a long time, I've just run AMD CPUs because in my price bracket, AMD, for the most part, does a better job. It's not all the time, but generally in my price bracket, they do. I'm not buying, you know, top-of-the-line... Uh, actually, I was going to say server CPUs, but Threadrip is actually, like completely destroy shit. I'm not buying... What is what is Intel... What does Intel take control over? Specific price segments, I would say. I don't think they own any, you know, market segment, but I think some specific price brackets might flip to the Intel side. That also depends on um, what region you're in and where local MS... Oh, when... Oh, not MSRP... No, no, also MSRP. Where local MSRP and then local retailer pricing actually ends up sitting stuff. Because you might have a, a, a CPU that's basically as performant as another one, and they are $20 apart. But then in another region, for whatever reason, the $20 actually flips, and you go with the other CPU instead. But I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, Intel made a fast CPU, and then people are talking about Intel CPUs as if that's a, uh, that's a crazy, exciting claim that has never been done before. Oh my god, Intel makes fast CPUs, who would have thought? Let me know when Intel releases their discrete GPUs, which are coming down the line.
from my understanding. They're not too far away. Uh, Intel D GPU. Um, where is the... Where, where are we going? Uh, as of six days ago from GPU mag. Do we know anything about when they might be released? Um... Release date. Here we go. It's possible the desktop queues may be delayed again. Uh, officially announced in Q2 of 2022. But we have no idea where they might or when they might be released. Look, I I am excited for Intel GPUs being a thing. Not because I will buy one. I am definitely not buying a first gen Intel uh, GPU. That's that's kind of insane. But it does add extra competition to both AMD and uh, NVIDIA. Plus, plus, Intel does have good GPU drivers on Linux, so assuming they make a good GPU, it's going to be good on Linux. And that means we have options on Linux, which right now, um, you don't. You have AMD and you have BAD. Those are your options. Or you can use other bad, which is integrated Intel graphics. At least the GPU drivers work well, but it doesn't matter they work well because the GPUs are slow as fuck. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, let's move on from that and uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. Oh, let's talk a bit about piracy. So there have been these situations in the past where, for whatever reason, a indie game couldn't be sold in a region. So you may remember, I think it was Hot, was it Hotline Miami? I think Hotline Miami was the last one that happened, uh, where the devs asked people in regions that couldn't buy it to pirate it. Um, is that it? Was it Hotline Miami? Yes, it was. It was Hotline Miami 2 for Australia, because Australia, um... The game was banned here because uh, I think violence and drugs or something. I don't know. Australia not knowing what an 18 plus rating means. But this is basically happening again. This time with Loop Hero and relating to the sanctions happening in Russia. But also, the they're actually affecting Ukraine as well. So, apparently, you can't buy stuff on Steam in Ukraine. I didn't know about this. I knew it was affecting uh, Russia, I didn't know Ukraine was being affected by that as well. I'm not really sure why that's occurring. Um, I'm sure someone who's more well-informed in the situation does. But the devs of Loop Hero basically are saying... There's a quote in here from them. Um, so, asked by a user how the studio can, uh, can be supported during the ongoing crisis, the Four Quarters account wrote via Google Translate... We can handle it, thank you. If there is such an opportunity for you to provide support, take better care of your loved ones and friends. And there is a... Where is it? Where... Was there a quote in here, or is it just... Uh, here we go. The Russian independent studio, which does not support the Russian invasion of Ukraine, encouraged its followers to help raise the pirate flag. In a March 27th post on its official VK account, it also shared a torrent link. Oh, they didn't... Oh, I didn't read that. I didn't read that part. I thought they were just saying, you know what? We'll be fine if you want to play Loop Hero, pirate the game. But they straight up are just giving you a link. Go pirate our game. Play our game. Let us know what you think. And I think this is actually a, a really cool thing to do. Loop Hero's been out for a while, I want to say. Actually, how many years? I, I don't think it's a new game. I might be thinking of another game. Loop Hero. My assumption... Oh, it came out last year. I must have been thinking of a different game. Um, yeah, I must have been thinking of a different game. But it's very likely they are working on, you know, some other game. It's almost guaranteed they're working on another game. So by doing this, what they're effectively doing is getting all of the news outlets, all of the gaming news outlets, to talk about, uh, talk about them and talk about how great they are, how great it is that they are doing this. So, effectively, they're getting free promotion. And they know during this time that there is no way that people in these regions are able to buy their game. Are you able to buy the game? Wait, hold up. 
they are located in Russia. Am I able to buy the game in Australia, or do they just not sell the game? I want to check this. Loop Hero. Um, okay, I am able to buy the game. Um, I am able to buy the game, but they can't be paid because they're in Russia, and Ukraine also... I read this... It was in the article somewhere. Um, yeah, here we go. And Ukraine uh, also can't f until April. I really don't know why that's the case. If someone knows, I would really like to know. Um, but yeah, since they can't really do anything about it, uh, play our game. Tell us what you think. And uh, when our next game comes out, let us know. And or we'll let you know and you can have a look at that one. I think that's really cool. Because there are a lot of devs out there who'd be like, no, we can't make money from the game. That means nobody is able to play our game. Which is a totally fair statement as well. You made the game and you've got it for sale. You should be able to expect that people are going to pay money for it. But I think this is a perfectly reasonable approach to make as well. And it's not like people in these regions weren't going to pirate it anyway if they wanted to play it. They know you can pirate games. They know you can pirate games. The devs know you can pirate games. Everyone knows this is a thing you can do. So we might as well just stop pretending about it and just get some good PR out of it. And clearly that's what's been done. I think it's a good thing. And I presume that everybody else would think it is... Uh, the, the, the words. I can't speak today. Uh, would think it is as well. Yeah. You know what game I still want to play? Elden Ring. And I reckon by the time I get to actually play it, it's probably going to be considerably less buggy than, uh, than it is right now. Because it seems like every other day, there is some announcement of some game-breaking bug or some, like, run-breaking bug or something wrong with the game where it just doesn't play right. So, um, these dogs were broken. Were very broken. <laughs> this dog can do 11,640 damage per second, which basically means you die. That's what it means. So, enemies in Elden Ring share animation data for efficiency. Instead of having to have unique attack animations for every slight variation of a horse, many of them use the same, vari uh, the same animations. This is the same thing that happens in all of the Souls games as well. You have these very, very similar enemies, and they'll do the same things. Perfectly reasonable, and a lot of games do this as well. It's a fairly reasonable tactic to make when you're not having unique animations for every single thing. So when either size of dog attacks, uh, the game checks to see which one it is and allows it to deal an appropriate amount of damage, uh, appropriate amount of damage to you. It does this uh, so that once you've been hit, you can't be hit again from the same attack. Or you're supposed to be able to. So, instead of locking in this decision on which dog attacks you, uh, Elden Ring picks one, then erases the data. I... Did that sentence not make sense? I did have, like... That is blank out for a second. Elden Ring picks one, then erases the data of that choice instead. No, that makes sense. I just can't read. Um, basically, it overwrites whatever variable is being used to... Um, to store that value rather than checking if a value has been set. Uh, as a result, it makes this decision over and over again for every frame that you're within the hitbox of the dog's attack, meaning you get hit for absurd amounts of damage in an instant. And that's not including the bleed status, which shaves off a fat percentage of your health after every successive attack. It's truly brutal. <laughs> From Software Games, I run into a similarly strange issue uh, before, in Dark Souls 2, weapon durability was tied to a frame rate because Dark Souls 2 was a really well made game. Um, so, running your game at 60 FPS caused your games to break twice as fast as those at 30 FPS. But, Big Brain Strat, play at 15 FPS, it breaks twice as slow. So, at the time, it felt like the developer had it out for PC players specifically. But given the Elden Ring is capped at 60 FPS on all platforms, we are truly blessed. Or we are. We're all blessed. Where are we adding words from? 
We get to experience the worst dogs of 2022. Haha, <laughs> funny, get it? Uh, can we please go back to simpler times when dogs and cats were good? Uh, what is this linking to? The pets of PC Gamer. Oh, it's just the pets owned by the PC Gamer staff. <laughs> Age eight or nine, probably. That's how I feel about uh, every pet I've ever owned. I've got no idea how old any of them are. These are all cute. These are all very cute pets. Oh, it's a snake. This lad owns a snake. Oh, there's its dinner. <laughs> anyway, Elden Ring. Um, This is what happens when you build a game on a... How old is Demon Souls? The original Demon Souls, not the new one. Uh, Demon Souls. On a... No, I don't want the fucking new one. I want the original Demon Souls. Go away. On a... 13-year-old code base. This is what happens when you build a game on a 13-year-old code base and then take the game from being a fairly, you know, closed corridor game into being an open world game like Elden Ring. This is what happens when you build Demon Souls... Uh, yeah, Demon Souls 5. That's what Elden Ring is. It's Demon Souls 5. We can joke about how, you know, every single year FIFA players will rebuy the exact same game, but... We all know that playing from software games is the exact same thing. Sure, they're all really good games, but at the end of the day, they're all basically the same game, with the exception of Dark Souls 2, which had some fucky mechanics. They get better every time, for the most, for the most part. Um, Dark Souls 2, ex exception. But for the, most part, it's <laughs> for the most part, mechanics get better. Mechanics, at least. I'll give it that. Uh, Dark Souls 2 just had weird things like... Terrible boss design and terrible world design. Like the the boss, the uh, the big the rat boss that I can't remember the name of. I never remember the name of it. It's a terrible boss. Uh, it has a bunch of like little rats in the arena around it. All of these rats can toxic you. And at this point in the game, you don't have any poison heal items, so you just die. Who thought that was a good idea? I don't know. Uh, Dark Souls 2, also at a boss where at launch, it could hit you through a fog wall. Not when, like, you're, uh, like, backed up from the fog wall, but when you're crossing the fog wall. So, you would die. Sometimes you get out of it. I think it was, like, a 50% chance of you dying or you gaining control of your character quick enough to be able to dodge roll out of the way. It was not, it was not a good fight. Plus, that boss was already fucked anyway, and did way too much damage. But it is what it is. One day I'll play Elden Ring. Probably after I finish Dark Souls and Sekiro and... Yeah, is, that's, is that it? Is that it? I don't have a PS5, so no Demon Souls. Oh, no new, no new Demon Souls for me. I've never played the original one, though. Um, is there any other games from From Software I need to play? Uh, from Software. Am I forgetting any? I very well might be. Uh, from Software. What will From Software do after Elden Ring? I don't know. Ask From Software. Games. No, not the Kingsfield games. We're not going to go back and play Kingsfield. Well, they've made so many weird games that nobody knows and nobody cares about. Um, yeah, Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro. What the fuck are these? They they made vi what the f nobody cares about any wait what wait they made a three DS Monster Hunter game from software made this what wait March March they made Bloodborne sep or March they released Bloodborne September they released Monster Hunter Diary. Poker Poker Iro Village DX. If you say so, I don't believe that. Uh, then they're yeah, going back before Dark Souls 2. There was some interesting titles here, like the Armored Core games. They made a Mobile Suit Gundam game. I didn't know that. I didn't know. They made... Wait, they made a Connect shooter as well. What, man? Before. Before Dark Souls got super big, From Software made some really weird games. I've heard good things about the Armored Core games, though. Uh, that might be an exception. 
but Kingsfield is what they used to be known for, but they've made so many other games. Wow. I don't know if any of any of these other ones are good. I I know I know Kingsfield is a very I think it's I think the best way to put it is an acquired taste. It's it's takes or oh, it, Dark Souls and Demon Souls built on what Kingsfield has set out. Kingsfield was basically a first person Demon Souls, but really, really slow. So you had to be very methodical in the way you fought. You didn't have a dodge roll. So to dodge attacks, you literally had to back out of attack range, which was not a good system. Uh, also, I think in Kingsfield 1, you died at the start of the game. You just died because there was a trap that the game didn't tell you about. So it's sort of like the Asylum Demon. If instead of the Asylum Demon being a big and scary enemy it fell from the ceiling and landed on your head. Basically, that's the difference. Well, I guess it does fall from the ceiling, but... Can you die from these... Wait, can you die from the Asylum Demon jump? Is that a thing you can do? I don't... I don't think you can die from the Asylum Demon jumping down. I've never seen it happen. If I go back and play Dark Souls 1, I'm going to try that out. Uh, I... You probably you probably can knowing knowing it's from from software game if you are stupid enough to get in the way of the asylum dim you can probably die from that cuz it, it's not a plunging attack though but would it be no cuz you do take damage when you when you oh an enemy does take damage when you fall on them so maybe huh i don't know i don't know Anyway, um, so, oh, back to this Elden Ring for a, thing for a second. So when you have 99 Vigor, which is your health stat, um, that 11,000 damage is five times your health bar. So, like, you just die. <laughs> if you can't get out of that within, um, or assuming you have 99 Vigor, in less than a 20th of a second, you just die. Which you won't be able to do, because unless you have, like, frame-perfect movement, and you know the dogs are completely busted, um, you just die. <laughs> fun game. Fun game. Anyway, speaking of fun games, uh, PlayStation Plus is being extended, and this is likely due to the way that Xbox Game Pass works. I remember when PlayStation Plus was basically just a, a game subscription service. So you got, like... I think like six games a month. If you download the games, you got them forever. Those were the those were the early days. I think that was back on the the PS3. I want to say, yeah, PS3 and then early PS4 days. Then when the PS5 rolled around, PlayStation Plus was required for online. I'm pretty sure it is. Someone correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but now it's being extended. Not extended for free. You're going to pay more money, but it's being extended. So, here we go. There is a middle tier now called PlayStation Plus Extra. Right, so the essential tier is basically the the one you already had. So you get two games, uh, cloud storage, uh, you get access to the PS collection, uh, which includes a great batch of PS4 classics. What's in the PlayStation collection right now? Can I can I see can I see right now? Um Let's see what games are in the PlayStation Plus collection right now. Uh PlayStation Plus collection. I wonder if I can see it. <laughs> PS4. Is it going to give me a list? Ah, oh, this this month on PS Plus. So, what do we have? Ark Survival Evolved. I don't know if you'd want to get into that game for a month. Uh, Team Sonic Racing. I am always a stickler for a good kart racer. And I like Sonic Racing. And then Ghost Runner. Okay. Fair enough. Ooh. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima Legends. Ooh, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, look at this. You also get some uh, Fortnite skins and some Apex skins and some Warzone skins. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you do require it for online. 
Elden Ring. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Not games I would specifically pay for, but if you're just getting them because you want to play online anyway, it's always good to have access to extra things. Um, middle tier. So this is now PlayStation Plus Extra. You get access to the same benefits as the essential tier, so that's good. I, I wouldn't expect you to lose benefits when you're paying more money. Um, with a library of up to 400 PS4 and PS5 games. Um... Oh, along with a library of 400 to 500 PS5 games. Or for whatever. Um, these will include 400 PS4 and PS5. That's what I'm trying to say. These will include PlayStation Studio titles as well as ones from third-party publishers out, uh, at, the, uh, at, at the outset. Sony plans to offer games including Death Stranding, okay, Walking Simulator, uh, God of War, Marvel Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man, Miles Morales, these are all good games. Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. Returnal. I don't know what Returnal is. What is Returnal? Oi. What is Returnal? It is... I have no idea what Returnal is. It is a game. It is a video game that has video game mechanics. Okay. Anyway. Uh, you'll be able to download these games and everything else on the extra tier for offline play, which is really good to see. Uh, Sony says the library will refresh regularly... So, as with Game Pass, some games might get dropped after a certain period. Makes total sense. I imagine they would keep some of the, you know, big major titles around, like, you know, the Spider-Man games, God of War, things like that. Um, definitely the Spider-Man games. So those games, from my understanding, are really, really popular. And then we have the Extra Tier. Um, this is... Oh, sorry. Extra Tier costs $15 a month. Um, that's 40 a quarter... Uh, in the US, 14 euros, which is not a equivalent exchange. I always feel really bad for the uh, the euro guys. Like, your pricing doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, 14 euros? Or oh, here we go. 14, uh, $40 per quarter, $40, uh, 40 euros per quarter. That is not the same value. Those are not the same numbers. For anyone who doesn't know about any currency, let's have a look at how much a US dollar and a euro is worth. USD to Euro. It's actually slightly cheaper. Okay. You know what? Fuck the Euro, guys. Um, you guys are getting it better now. Uh, <laughs> it used to be worse. It did used to be worse, but nowadays it is a, 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 a tad better. Um, 11 pounds, uh, 32 per quarter, uh, 84 per year, reasonable, 1300 yen, 3600 yen. And 8,600 uh, yen per year. I don't know the yen conversion rate, but judging by the fact that uh, everything seems to be decent, it's probably fine. Um, then we have the 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 where is the top the top end tier PlayStation Plus Premium. Uh, this will include obviously everything in the earlier tiers. Why wouldn't it? Uh, you'll also get access to another 340 or so uh, games, including PS3 titles uh, you can stream via the cloud, a bunch of PS1, PS2, and PSP games uh, to stream or download, meaning that Sony is using on-console emulation. Uh, Time-limited game trials will also be available on this tier. That's actually really cool. The problem I have with the way that older games are distributed on modern systems is usually it's like, hey, pay me $15 to pay uh, to play Jack and Daxter 2. No, I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. I can buy a PS2 and the game for double that price. What are you talking about? Like, that's just not going to happen. Plus, you know, you can easily emulate it yourself. You don't need a console to emulate it. But I think this is a better way. How much does it cost? 18 a month. You know what? That's actually really good. That's, that's actually really good for what you're getting. If you are the sort of person who wants to go back and play PS1 and PS2 games, uh, and PSP games, uh, this is... You know, not the, the worst thing if you're already paying for PlayStation Plus. If you're already paying for it and then going to 
uh, what is it, like $8 more? Yeah, $8 more. So almost double the price. But you get all of this extra stuff. Now, it's a matter of what games will actually be available. That's the, the biggest question here. We can assume that any of the... Any of the major games will be there. Like the Jack and Daxter games. I'll be very surprised if they're not there. Um, I will be very surprised if the Kingdom Hearts games are not there. Hopefully they're there. If they're not, they'll be stupid. Even though you can play the HD versions on you know, on the console anyway. Um, but they'll probably be there. Jack X better be there. Make sure Jack X is on there. Uh, I... There's plenty of amazing games in that era. Hopefully, hopefully they they get games that are good. Because that's the problem that has happened a lot of the time with these systems as well. They'll have these programs, and then nobody wants to play the games anyway because they're shit. It's like you have this incredible game library, and somehow you manage to find the bottom of the barrel. Surely there will be bottom of the barrel games in this as well, but... I hope that I hope that it's not just bottom of the barrel. Judging by what they have for the PS4 games, it, we should be in you know some some level of luck. But it's kind of funny that the PS3 games are still going to be uh, streamed because even Sony, knowing how the PS3 works, has no fucking clue how to emulate it. <laughs> like PS3 emulation. PS3 emulation, I will be very surprised if it is in, if it's in like a really good state before PS4. Because PS4 obviously is a very powerful system relative to the PS3. But the PS3 just has this jank as fuck architecture that makes it really slow on everything. I know that it's getting better, but you still need basically a supercomputer to get a really good frame rate. Like, the frame rates you want to be playing. Uh, if you're going to be playing, like, sub-console frame rates anyway, you might as well just play it on a, uh, on a console. I know RPCS3 is a thing, but the requirements for it, at least last time I checked, were no, pi no piracy. Yeah, definitely. No one ever pirates... Using uh using your application. Is PS3 emulation any good? It's a work in progress. Yep, that's a good way to put PS4 look, PS4 emulation is still a work in progress. PS5 emulation isn't gonna be here anytime soon. Wait, you can run RPCS3 on FreeBSD? I guess it makes sense, kit uh since um Isn't wait, is is the PS3 based on I want to say the PS3 is based on FreeBSD. Might be OpenBSD. Um, let me check. I don't want to be mistaken on that. Uh, BSD. When I think of the Switch, no, it's got to be based on a B yeah, on on some variant of BSD. Surely, surely it is. Uh, FreeBSD. Oh, it's a fork of both FreeBSD and NetBSD called Cell OS. Yes. Right, the PS3 had that stupid cell processor, which was a... This is why it's so hard to emulate and doesn't make any sense. It was a single-core processor. Why was it a single-core processor? It was just a really big CPU. So it doesn't make any sense to emulate on modern hardware. That's why it's taken so long to get to the point where it's actually good. I remember PS2 emulation was relatively good not long after the PS2 just wasn't relevant anymore. PS3 is... When the fuck did the PS3 come out? Uh, PS3... 2007, I want to say. Or I think of 360. Um, PS3... 2006. In Japan... Pal, it came out in 2007, which means Pal means most of the world that is not the US and Japan. <laughs> uh, I guess, and yeah, most of the world that isn't the US, Japan, and I guess Russia and China have another system. Sure, why? I don't know. Um, here's 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 a map. Oh, map, map, map. 
No, that's... Where's the map? Here we go. There's the map. So, like, yeah, this is a weird map. Um, 16 years? 16 years. Going on 16 years. Yeah, 16 years as of November. 15 years... Um, oh, 15 years in March... Wait, no. Going on 17 years as of November. I can't do maths. I can't speak... I can't read, and I can't do maths. Maybe we should go back to school. <laughs> maybe, actually, maybe that's the problem. Maybe I went to too much school. Maybe school made me dumb. Maybe I need to listen to some of the, uh, the you know, finance influencers who say that college is bad and you should drop out of school. Because as we know, every billionaire dropped out of school. Like, you know, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg. That's the end of the list. <laughs> That's the end of the list, isn't it? I'm sure there's a couple of others, but... I love the finance influencers talk about... Uh, it talk about people dropping out of university, dropping out of college, as if that's the absolute norm, uh, normal thing to do, and then forgetting where they dropped out from. It's like, oh, yeah, they dropped out of college, and it's like they dropped out of, you know, Oxford. They dropped out of Caltech and other, like, actually pre uh, prestigious schools, not... They dropped out of the local community college that nobody goes to unless they live in the town. <laughs> like, it's it's a very different level of uh, of dropping out. This is a random tangent. I don't know how we got here. Uh, something, something. How the fuck did we get here? I don't know. I was talking about the PS3 before. Yeah. Um, this is a thing. So, like, you can play games. But... You know, you can probably play them better on an emulator anyway. They're not... Uh, I, I'm curious what they're going to be doing with the emulation. Is it just going to be straight emulation? Is it going to be emulation and then upscaling at least to the, uh, like, resolution of the PS5 and the PS4? Are they going to be applying filters? Is it going to be FPS tweaks? What is it going to be? Because if it's just straight emulation, not doing, like, any upscaling... I, I could literally run a, a PS2 game doing that on my phone. Pretty sure. Pretty sure PS2 emulation's gotten good enough to do that. And phones have gotten stupid enough to do that as well. But I know you can do it for PS1. Absolutely, that is the um, that is the case. But I got a message from my boss asking me to come into work. He sent it an hour, to, an hour ago. He probably found someone already. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I had my phone on silent all the time. But anyway, the point I was getting at. Emulation. If it is just boring, basic emulation where they've done nothing to enhance the game, yeah, you might you might not want to pay it, but hopefully, hopefully they do more than nothing. More than nothing is always a good start to be in, and we can always, you know, work for better from that point. And now we're back to the final section of the podcast. I've been mulling over whether I want to announce this yet, but I have been in the process of working on a new stream layout. I know the streams have been on break for a while because the connection's still been a mess, but because I have this time off, uh, I've basically been working on a new layout. It's very much a... It's very much a work in progress. It's... It's not done by any means. I've still got to move a lot of stuff around. And I'll see if I actually have a version of it rendered out. Um, this is going to be the layout. I don't have the layout for my actual like streaming bit. This is just the, the starting screen. But it's all, it, it, it's all going to have basically the, um, the same concept. So do we have a render of it? I thought I had a render. Is this it? Wait, let me check. That is a render without the text. Okay, let me just... um. You know what? I'll show you the version without the text. I'll show you the version without the text, and I'll show you the... I'll, I'll have the other version rendered out. I'll render that while recording this, which seems like a really terrible idea, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> And I hopefully will not regret it. Let's see how long it's going to take to render, considering it has fucking 12 layers in my video editor. Oh, only 40 seconds. Okay. And stuff not lagging. Okay, we're good. Cool. Um, here is 
the version without any any of the extra effects. I personally think it's a a really really cool really cool change. So we have this. I I had to go and make this pattern in the background myself. Um, there was a a version of this that is, uh, that did exist. I've pretty much had to go and hand re like hand place everything, make sure everything is laid out the way I want it. I wasn't a big fan of the symbols that were originally used. Um, I think it was using like the Mickey symbol in here and a couple other ones, but I decided to go and change it out for the. Uh, so we have the crown, the heart, the nobody, heartless. Um, Unversed, and then Dream Eater. And the crown is sort of much larger than all of the others, but I feel like it it kind of still works really well. And this little 3D animation in the background here as well, that's something I I made myself. Not the, the logo. The logo I found somewhere. But I, I had to go and like learn how to... Um, Learn how to do, firstly extrude out a 2D image in Blender and then learn how to do basic Blender animation. I could have paid someone to do this, absolutely. And it probably would have been done, you know, considerably faster. But I I didn't want to try to explain uh, everything I wanted to do here. So I just went and made it myself and now we're in this state. So here is... Here is the current version. There's still a little bit scuffed because I haven't actually worried about um, fixing up placement. So there's still this very small gap between these two sections here. But this is basically how it's going to look. And I, I, I really like it. Obviously, it's going to loop as well. Like It's not going to stop at seven seconds. Can I loop in here? Um, is... is is looping a thing. There is no loop option here, but yeah, I I like this. And you might notice the font here. So this font is a font by the name of Vox Bold. Vox Bold is not the font used in Kingdom Hearts 2, but it is very, very, very close. I believe the font they use is based on Vox Bold. Uh, and then we have the... The command menu here is uh, based on the the Kingdom Hearts three command menu. I think I think I might put a a little thing here that says social. I think that's the one thing that's missing. Yeah, I I think that's what I need to do. Um, because right now you just have this like you just have this ephemeral command menu. Ephemeral is that the correct word? Probably not. You just have this command menu floating here with nothing sort of above it, and there is. Obviously, this extra space I can use as well. So, I think that might be good. Mm. Um, these I had to remake myself because unlike for Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 1, nobody has actually cropped out just the command menu bits themselves. So, basically, I'm on my, my own. It's... It's very inspired by it, but it's not direct assets. I hope that I hope that it's it's coming together well. Obviously, as I've said, there's like spacing and stuff that's not correct. I want to make sure these are like perfectly lined up, these are lined up, things like that. But I've got this looping like it should. Um at least it should be. It might look slightly weird because of the video player here, but unless I've made a mistake, it should be looping. Uh, it looks slightly off though, which slightly bothers me. Um, I don't think it should be broken. Un unless I've scuffed up the spacing, in which case... It's very- that's actually entirely possible. It is more than... Yeah, it is actually very likely that I've scuffed up the spacing somewhere. And that's why it looks slightly off there. Um, I will have to double check that to make sure that's not the case. I actually had to remake this background, not remake, like re-render the background a couple of times because it just didn't... Oh no, no, that is, 
that is wrong because I haven't actually fixed up, uh, fixed up the the ending point. So it should be fine, I think. Um, it should be, but I haven't got the ending point exactly where it needs to be. Okay, no, that that's just a that I think is just a me problem with me not doing stuff properly. I hope. Um, but I could be I could be completely wrong. In which case, well, um. That's a that's a then problem. This is a now problem. <laughs> if it is scuffed, I'm not really sure how it would have been. But hmm, because I I shouldn't have any spacing being weird. But anyway, this is basically what I'm gonna have for my um by. My starting, my pause, and my ending screen. I'm going to get a custom stinger made, basically like a transition. Um, or I will make something myself where basically it like, it does the like the keyhole transition. So you like go into the keyhole and go to this and come out of the keyhole. And it, I think it'll look cool. Maybe I'm uh Maybe I'm overestimating how good it's going to look, but I, I feel like I feel like with uh, with that it'll definitely be coming together. Uh, I I think for my I think for the like main layout I'm gonna have my camera down in the corner here and the chat above it. I feel like when the camera's at the top, it made it really weird when I was doing a stream with someone else. Because I would be up here, then their camera would be like way over here or something. And this wouldn't make sense. So flip it upside down, put it on the left hand side. I put it on the left hand side because that seems to be what everyone's doing right now. So you know what, fuck it, just copy everyone else's layout. Also when it, uh, it's, it's on the bottom, it'll make it easier to do green screen stuff as well. So that's a plan at the new place, I've talked about that. Um, yeah. I, I probably will just have red accents around the the game window or something like that. And maybe, maybe like the, the top part of the command menu as a thing for chat. So Kingdom Hearts 3 command menu. Here we go. Hmm. <gasps> Uh, I do actually have a a version of um a version of this font. Someone has extracted this font out of the game, so making that isn't actually super difficult. It's a lot easier than you otherwise might have anticipated. Uh, so I think that'll look I think that'll look really cool as well. I think all of that coming together is going to look really cool. I've also talked on Twitter a bit about looking at Fiverr stuff. So initially that was just going to be for uh, the other bit. Oh, it was initially just going to be for the, for, for you know, making this layout. But I also want to go and get some custom art done for, uh, not for the, the channel art itself, but probably... Probably getting some sort of, like, mascot character done. And because I am, you know, too lazy to describe things, I'll probably just get a... I found an artist that I think has a really cool art style. Uh, get a drawing of my 14 character done and go with that from then on. So that'll be my profile picture on Twitter. And then because they're actually surprisingly cheap, I might get... Like, not for an entire, not for every single stream, but maybe for a series, uh, get a custom bit of chibi art done for whatever the game is. So for like Kingdom Hearts, for example, I might have a chibi design of my character in master form or valor form or something. And I think that would look really, really cool. When I say they are surprisingly cheap, I mean they are like stupid cheap. There are some artists that do, like, really, really good art for, like, $7, which I, I don't know why. Like, these are not people living in really, really cheap areas. Like, that makes sense. There's a lot of people who 
who are living in like the UK who have these insanely cheap um what's the word insanely cheap prices I'm like okay like i will pay it i'm happy to do that but like you can charge more your art is really good i don't know why you'd be charging as much as you are but hey whatever people want to charge i guess that's i guess that's ultimately um ultimately what's gonna be end up i uh, end up being paid it's also sort of like part of the the fiverr market Fiverr sort of drives all of the prices into the ground. That's probably actually a big part of it. Because you have all of these people competing in this exact same space, you sort of have to lower your prices to make your art stand out, or you have to rely on the fact that your art is really, really good. One of those... One of those is a little bit easier than the other. If you're going to rely on just dropping your prices and then still having good art, like, it's it's pretty easy to, like, you know... It's pretty easy to stand out then. But if you're like, oh, I'm going to raise the prices and your art's still good, but it's not, like, exceptionally good, someone's just going to go to the person where it's like, oh, well, this person's half the price but the art's still really good. I'm sure working on Fiverr is a horrible experience, but hey, if you've, cho if you've chosen to be there, I am guess I'm just gonna... I'll, I'll take advantage of the situation. You could always go and do something that is not Fiverr, um, but hey, maybe you can't. Maybe you, the, the only thing you can do is make art on Fiverr, and there is no possible way there is anything else you're able to do. I don't know. As it stands, though, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to get some art done, and we'll go from there. I also want to get some art done for my alerts. So, probably doing the same thing, using that character that's being designed, and then, uh, getting a specific designs done for those alerts. So, I'm not settled on what they're going to be, but I do have some ideas, like, for a follow, hugging a big heart, you know, things like that. You know, the, the basic anime shit you've seen every VTuber do before. Basically, I'm going to steal the VTuber style, but not be a VTuber, because that's a lot of money, and I have an expensive lens. I don't want to waste that. Yeah. You know. Why would I go and buy, like, become a VTuber when I bought this lens specifically to make this right here look better? More natural, we'll say. Better is, uh, better is not going to happen. Not deathly ill, as we said before, but, um, yeah. <laughs> so... That'll be hopefully done unless something really bad happens. All of that'll be done by the time I'm in the new place and all, all of the stream stuff's back working. I'm still not sure if I'm going to stream that first week, but second week is definitely going to happen. First week, you know, moving in and all that fun stuff. But after that point, when everything's how it should be, then definitely... Uh... Back, uh, back to Hollow Knight, back to, I guess, Kingdom Hearts 2 with starting, and, uh, yeah, go on from there. Um, what can we end off the podcast with? What can we talk about? Mmm, you know what, do we want to talk about the Will Smith, Chris Rock thing? You know, it's already old news by the time you guys are seeing this, but hey, did you know? Okay, you know what, we're turn this up. Did you know that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock? Whoa. Nobody's ever told you this before. You're hearing it for the first time right... This probably clipping right now. I'm going to turn this down before people leave. Actually, we're like an hour 40 in the podcast. If you've left already, uh, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Hi, Chase. What are you doing? You just wake up? What are you doing? What are you going to try to eat on my desk right now? Are you going to entertain the people the last five, ten minutes? Hey, what do you want? Just going to chill here? What's going on? Hey, buddy. What do you want? Hey? Give the people what they want. Tell them something. Gee, you are not a fan of the microphone. <laughs> I thought he would try to fucking eat it or something, but nope. He's just, uh, he is just not a fan. Are you gonna bite me? Are you gonna lick me? 
Okay, that's fine. You can lick me. Even though you have like a weird cat tongue. Hi. He will headbutt me. If I head if I headbutt him, he'll just keep headbutting me back. Or he'll start the headbutting. I don't know. Depends on uh, depends on how he's feeling. Right now, you know, you gotta you gotta initiate the headbutting. This is probably great content. This is I'm sure this is great content for everybody right now. I'm just gonna sit here and play with the cat. Watch. What do you want? Um Yes, we'll we'll just have Chase sitting here for the last couple of minutes and we'll talk about you know what? Crunchyroll is getting rid of their free tea. You know, we'll talk about that. We're not going to talk about the Will Smith thing because everyone doesn't oh, no one cares at this point. No one probably cares about this either, but hey, we're gonna do what we're gonna do what we're gonna do. So Crunchyroll has had a free ad supported tier for I don't even know how long, probably since it came out. Um now you're going to have to either pay for the site or acquire the series through other means. I have a feeling this is likely due to the the acquisitions that have happened recently, where basically there's there's one anime streaming service now. They're all owned by the same company. It's likely that's the case, uh, but I don't entirely have a confirmation on that. But it is kind of sad. I, I'm not a big fan of Crunchyroll. I've never really been one. I do have a temporary sub, um, but that's only because I don't want to watch ads. I guess I could always... I don't know if ad block works in this site. Probably not. But I don't want to watch ads when I'm trying to watch Naruto. That's the only reason why I have it. And I'm like, hey, if I'm going to watch Naruto and it's going to look like shit anyway, I might as well stream it. Like, if, if it's something that's actually in HD, sure, that's different. But, like, I'm still in very early Shippuden. I just got past, like, the first arc with the, um, with Gara being captured. So I'm still very early on. Oh, Sai was literally, like, just introduced to the story. So we're still in 480p. I'm sure there's a, a HD version I can find out there somewhere. But I'm not going to look for it. And it's certainly not the the first options I was finding. Because, what, this, this would still be in, like, when did Shippuden start? Uh, Naruto. Shippuden. No, not filler episodes. Naruto. 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 Believe it. Believe it. Great song. Go listen to the, uh, the German Naruto opening if you've not heard it before. Um, first episode was in 2007, so yeah, not seeing things in HD was still fairly common at that point, probably, probably by, you know, a couple of hundred episodes in, then we'll be in the, uh, the HD, the HD section, and then I'll just stop watching on, on Crunchyroll, because I'm sure of all things, I'll be able to find means to acquire it that are still being, um... Um, how would I describe it? Uh, invested into with data, we'll say. Yes. Data investments. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't care enough about Crunchyroll for this to be a big deal. If you like Crunchyroll, I guess you just got to pay for it. Or you could, uh, find one of its competition, which doesn't exist anymore. Because they just keep buying all of it. Capitalism. <laughs> oh, my lord. Uh, what else do we have? One last short topic we can talk about. Um, You know what? We'll talk about some Final Fantasy XIV because somehow I've gone most of the podcast without actually talking about it. Let's talk about this recent Famitsu survey that... Uh, Shown what the Japanese players are a fan of in this game. So, let's have a look. So, demographics of the respondents. So, 53% were women, 41% were men, 6% other or didn't answer. Imagine the MMO that has 53% women respondents to a survey. That just doesn't make any sense. It, it just genuinely doesn't. And then people in their 30s. 
30s women. This is 14. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just not what you'd expect for an MMO. Uh, anyway, character gender. This... This makes a lot of sense. This, I, I've played on the JP servers. Everything I'm seeing here makes general rough sense. So 56% uh, play as a female character. That makes a lot of sense. 44% uh, is male, obviously, because there's only two choices in this game. Um, of the male respondents, 47% play as a male, 53% play as a woman, because of course they do. For the females, 40% play as a man, 6% play as women. Everyone just likes to play as women. Here's the thing about 14. Uh, the game is designed to be played as a female. All of the gear, all of like besides like the the really armored gear, anything that's not for like a tank, every other job's gear is all designed around female characters. It just looks better on female characters, especially like a lot of the a lot of the job gear is, like, robes and dresses. And sure, you can wear them just fine as a male character, but you can clearly see they just... It it looks like... it Like, when a male character is wearing the white mage gear, for example, it looks like the dude is playing dress-up as a white mage. Whereas on the female characters, it's sort of like... it It fits. It's clearly designed around the size of the female characters. But anyway... Um, this also makes a lot of sense. So, character race breakdown. 25% play as Mikote, that's a cat girl. Uh, 19% play as Ara. Uh, basically they have these little horns on their head. Uh, 17% play as Lalafell, which are the little fucking... The, 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 the gnome, the dwarves, the children, as some people might like to call them. Uh, 14% of people are boring, and they play as the humans. 12% play as bunny girls. 8% play as the elves, which makes sense because they have these stupid long giraffe necks and look ridiculous. 3% uh, play as Rogadane. I'm surprised it's 3%. And 2% play as a furry, as a Hrothgar. I'm going to show you a picture of a Hrothgar if you've never played 14. Um, FF14, Hrothgar. Let's see how quickly there is porn of Hrothgar that shows up. Surprisingly, not straight away. You know what? I'll take it. That is a terrible picture. Give me a picture that is not really tiny. Here we go. Hrothgar. They are... They are lion men. Basically, as I said, it is the... It is the furry race. Um, here we go. Play frequency. This is actually something I'm really surprised about. Uh, wait, in the last survey, the error was 5%. It looks like the addition of male... Right, okay. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, Viera went up to 12% because male Viera were added, so people like to play as bunny boys, which also makes a lot of sense considering how many bunny boys is running around. Um, play frequency. So, 69%, nice. Uh, play three... Wait, play every day. 69% play every day. Three to five... Uh, 90% play uh, three to five days a week, which is fucking crazy. Um, 7% play when new patches release, 4% play one to two days a week, and other 1%. I guess I fit into... I guess I fit into this category, because most of the time I play... I play three days a week, but I like to play in fairly long sessions, so... If we take the time I play, like, I usually play, like, 10, 15 hours a week. Which, if you spread that out, for most people, that's probably playing basically every day. Obviously, there are the exceptions where they play, like, 40 hours a week. But if you're playing 15 hours, maybe close to, yeah, 15 hours, I would say, that's probably close to, it's definitely in this bracket if we break it down by hours. Uh, free company membership, so basically in a guild, uh, yes, makes sense, 12%, no, 1%, no answer. I don't know why you would say no answer to that. You either are or you are not in a free company, but sure. Now, this is something where I was very, very confused by what I've seen play, but I guess, I guess I just haven't seen all of these dragoons. 10% of people is the biggest breakdown of players who play Dragoon. That was not a sentence. 
The biggest job is Dragoon. That is a 10%. Uh, Dragoon is the basically your Lancer class. It is a DPS job. It is the job played by one of the main characters. And it is one of the main characters that people are a big fan of. That is Estinian. Um, White Mage is 7%, which I'm really surprised that White Mage is so high. I genuinely don't know why White Mage is that high in the list. I would have expected... Honestly, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was something like Black Mage because of, you know, Yashtola. Or even... Yeah, you know, I was going to say... I was going to say Scholar because of Alpha Nord, but no one cares about Alpha Nord. Um, no, it. I'm surprised it's White Mage. Then, I'm not going to go through all of them, but Bard, 7%. Red Mage. Red Mage makes sense where it is because um, Alice plays... Oh, Alice is a Red Mage. Uh, Dark Knight, 6%. Makes sense. Um, lowest, obviously, Blue Mage because Blue Mage isn't a real job. And 3% is the lowest of the the regular jobs that is not a meme job. Um, now, this is where it gets fucking weird. Why is the most popular crafter or gatherer job a culinarian? So, all of the other uh, crafting jobs are all fairly similar. And then culinarian comes along and is like, Hey, do you want, like, double the things to craft? And they're all, like, really complex recipes where you need to make, like, seven different layers of items. Do you want to do that? Well, here you go. I guess people re like people who are really into crafting, I guess they just are really into crafting. Um, 16% none in particular, which <laughs> makes sense. If everybody played a crafter or gatherer, um, the marker board would be very packed with items. And then most popular gatherer, fisherman or fisher, whatever you want to call it. Fishing is the best skill in every game that it exists in. This is great. I love that it is here. Also, it means that, you know, when you go on, um, what are they, fishing expedition? Ocean expedition, whatever they're called. You go on the fishing boat. Uh, you actually have people there, which is nice. When did people start playing? Uh, 21, uh, 2021 to 2022, 12%. 2020, 20%. Uh, this is probably related to the... Oi, don't claw that. Uh, probably related to when one, a lot of the big streamers started playing. And then this is... Was that sh I think that was when Shadow... One of these is when Shadowbringers came out, which, yeah, makes sense. Uh, favorite songs. I don't actually know many of the song names. Uh, equipment. This equipment I don't recognize. Um, favorite mount. One of them is the Death Claw. The Death Claw is this little, like, claw that will pick you up by the scruff of your neck and just fly around with you. Honestly, great mount. I love that that's there. Um, what else do we have? The standard chocobo, obviously, because, you know, a lot of people just... You have your chocobo with you as, a, as like, an extra party member. It's always there with you, so it makes sense people like it. Um, and the black chocobo from Heaven's Ward is also a uh, popular mention. Uh, favorite minions? Uh, Midgard Summer, which you get from the... Um, the around... Two point... I want to say like 2.5 or something. One of the patches for uh, Aroma Born, the fat cat, which is a fat cat. It's a fat cat that follows you around. Are basically minions of pets. They they little little creatures that'll follow around for whatever reason. Um, Nutkin is a little. It is a squirrel. The is is that the one with the Santa hat? I think that's the one with the Santa hat. Um, if it might be. FF14 Nutkin. Or is that a different one? No, this is the one that carries... Okay, well, it's called the Nutkin. It is the one that carries around a nut. Makes sense. Um, and then Major General, which is basically the, the Gura minion. Um, it's, a, it's a shark. <laughs> it's a shark that follows you around on two legs. It's kind of adorable. You get it from... You get it from fishing? You get it from fishing. Okay, you get it from a fishing achievement. Sure. <laughs> okay, that's not what I expected. Um, Story? Endwalker is their favorite story. Wow, I'm surprised. 
Uh, Shadowbringers, second favorite. <laughs> For a second, I thought it was going to just go in order. Um, no, it, Stormblood is after Heaven's Ward. People like Heaven's Ward more than Stormblood. Um, and then Realm Reborn is the least popular, which is what I hear from everyone. Uh, favorite zones? East Shroud. East Shroud is not a great location. Southern Thunderlands are desert. It looks cool. Limsala Minza also makes a lot of sense because people just don't fucking leave the hub area. <laughs> they just they just stand there all day, probably talking in their FCs or you know doing ERP or whatever it is they're doing. But uh, that makes sense. Um, what else? Favorite battle content? Oh yeah, Cape Westwind. Cape Westwind, the uh, the biggest meme of the entire game, which used to be remotely difficult, but because of like. Uh, because of damage scaling and uh, not damage scaling on your weapons, but damage scaling on your abilities, um, is broken now. You literally cannot die there because there are no mechanics. The fight ends before the mechanics start. <laughs> so Starship is the first dungeon in the game. I don't think people actually like this. I think this is just a case of Stockholm syndrome. Um, and obviously the most popular non-battle content, housing. Crafting glamour because this is Final Fantasy XIV and housing and glamour are the biggest things in the game. I'm surprised crafting is that high, but considering non-battle content, oh uh, yeah, it makes sense. Good, it'd be higher than things like the gold saucer and things like that. But housing and glamour is why you play fourteen, and that is going to be the end of the podcast. So. Thank you guys for watching. Somehow my camera seems to have slightly moved off center from where it was. Maybe this was from when I was... Oh, this is probably from when I was messing with it earlier. I just never fixed it. There we go. Now that's slightly worse. Better? I don't know what it is. Hi, Chase. You're going to do the outro with me? Hi. Um, Yeah. So this has been episode 109 of Tego T. There is a cat here. He is adorable when he wants to be other times he's really annoying like right now <laughs> he's gonna lick my hand um main channel Brody robertson i do linux content there you okay uh gaming channel Brody robertson plays where i barely upload stuff because i am um rationing the shorts that i have available so i have enough to the point where i can get the new setup and everything's good then if you are a podcast listener, if you're a podcast listener, of course you're a podcast listener. You're here right now. If you are a listener of the audio version of the podcast, yes, that one, uh, the video version is available on the Tech Over T YouTube. If you're watching on the YouTube, the uh, podcast is available everywhere you can find podcasts. There is an RSS feed. It's on Spotify. All of that fun stuff you might want to be using. And yeah, that's going to be it for me. And I'm out.